everyone, it's Nona Grace and I'm from Western New York. Today I brought my notebook in because I always say I should write down my thoughts of the day. Well, today I, I wrote down my thoughts. There's lots on here. And so what I did today, the first thought that came to my mind was when we were watching TV this morning and there was an advertisement that came on. We watch the Good Morning America, yeah. I think it is, in the, that we watch or something. No, no, no. It's Sunday, morning, Sunday morning. Sunday morning, morning we watch that. And it's on for like an hour and a half. Well, anyways, an advertisement came on. And they had their TV, and they were all watching like up like this. And I'm thinking, how high is their TV? It's pretty high. Because our television is down low. We're like eight inches off the floor. And it's a lot easier to, for your eyes and your body to look at something that's almost, down low. So you're looking, you're looking like, like that instead of up in the air. And that was a thought that I had. Like, and I said to Jim, I says, how high, are, how high is that TV? It's pretty high. Then well, on the show that we were watching Sunday morning, they had the, one of the people that talk they do a little they have little segments and one of the segments he was talking about he had blonde hair and he was talking about how it seemed like all the bad guys have blonde hair in all the shows that he watches and well I hadn't taken note of that and he even said that the the planet of the apes the meanest ape of them all was blonde well I never noticed but I will take note now to see who what color the hair is of the bad guys but I do know that any time that they have a bunch of girls together, who is the one that's the flirty and the one that gets all the attention is the blonde. So with the girls, it's always the blonde that gets all the attention. And with the boys, it's always the bad guy, apparently. That was something that ran through my head this morning. <laughs> and um, and I also asked, how do they choose these people that do the, the advertisements for the, for political. the political ad, ads? And I, I wondered, because they, they sound like they really believe what they're saying. And Jim goes, they're probably actors. And I said, well, they'd have to be paid an awful lot of money because they, I wonder if they believe what they're saying. Because whether they believe it or not, if they're an actor, they have to say it anyways. Then I also was thinking about, because people are always making recipes, and in their recipes they're always talking about they added verde, green, and it's like, well, just say green stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and pico de gallo, just tell them that they're adding chopped up tomatoes with a little bit of cilantro and onions and garlic and basil <laughs> instead of saying I'm adding pico de gallo <laughs> or if you incorporated the ingredients you folded them in or you stirred them in or you you blended them is what you did but they like to use these words when they're when they're talking about food and when I was watching Aretha and she says that she's from Seattle every time I hear her say that what comes to my mind but a song from um, it was a, a song of where the program was where they were mail order mail order brides were being sent to Seattle because then the song is the bluest skies you'll ever see are in Seattle and the hills the greenest green are in Seattle the beautiful sky I don't know the song. I don't know I forgot <laughs> Well, anyways, the the blues, the bluest skies you'll ever see. Something rather running deep and running wild. I don't know, but I but I used to love that. It was it was a mail order bride thing because I guess in Seattle, there weren't many women years ago, and they were trucking them in. Probably back in the gold rush days. Probably, it was a long time ago. But it was really kind of funny because the girls would get off the train or off the thing that brought them. And there'd be a lot of guys there, and they would be bidding on the girls who they wanted to be their wife. <laughs> and the girls were all coming knowing that they were going to be a wife. It was an old show. Um, people here when they added a comment. 
I don't know what that one was. <laughs> I write in shorthand sometimes where I don't know what I'm even saying. And how many times did you move since birth? We were talking about that too because I've been watching different people and different people have moved every few years they've been moving and they're I, I, and I I have never moved. I yes, moved. You did. Well, yeah, I did when I we, moved, married we moved you. Once. Well, <laughs> we've moved twice. I I lived in the same house all of my growing up years and my parents lived there until they moved here. So they lived there over 60 years in the same house. And um I actually had the same parents. I didn't even, you know, like a lot of people have um, step parents. I had and step brothers, step sisters. I have just my immediate. Family. I'm just. I, I guess I'm odd <laughs> <laughs> because it's not of today. I had the same house, same parents, same brothers and sisters, and nobody new came into our lives. It was just us. And then when Jim and I got married. We moved to our apartment, and then when we were in the apartment, we moved here. And so we've been here for, well, mm. Jessica will be, well, Michael was, Jessica wasn't born yet. No. Michael, so 38 years or 39 years we've been in this house. So we've been here a long time. And Jim's family, the same thing. They lived in the same house all his life. Mm -hmm. And all his parents' life, they lived in the same house. In fact, my my dad built our house. Yeah, and he had only his brothers and sisters, and there was no no step or a, or half or anything in that family either. So I guess we're just a, a rare. It's rare today because, like, when the kids go to school, I have even grandchildren that when they go to school that. Two of them have one last name, and the other two have a different last name, and oh, it can be so confusing. And then the schools had to decide how they were going to set up because they have the distant learning. So, on, and they want all the kids in the same family to go to school at the same time. So, if you've got different names, it makes it even harder because now you've got a a person at the beginning of the alphabet and maybe somebody at the end of the alphabet that's in the same household so that family's got to go whereas they would do it normally you would do it just alphabetically and we'd all be going to school however they divide it up and then you'd go the certain days and then the other half would go the other days a lot of confusion but that was that was the random <laughs> thoughts of today so that's my video. Uh, oh, I forgot. Oh my goodness. It's not the end. It's mm -hmm. not the end. I, I'm going to put a little video in here of me making, or kind of, kind of making kombucha. Today I thought I would show you I make kombucha. And this is the empty jug. I just emptied it, but I leave a little bit in there just to start the new batch. This is the hot water with this cup of sugar and then I'm putting the tea bags in another um, little measuring cup and there's four tea bags in there to just steep and get nice and dark and this is the scoby as you can see it looks pretty yicky and the way I made the scoby was I bought kombucha and then I saved a little bit of it in the bottom with the sediment put that in with my tea water and sugar and let it ferment and this is what I've got I've got a pretty good I've got a pretty good scoby going I've got it's got so looks yucky don't it Make sure your hands are clean when you do this my hands off and this is the measuring cup that I measured the sugar with it's a cup of sugar but I used a quarter cup because I just used a quarter cup all right after the water, this sugar water is cool and the tea is cool, you will add it to the gallon and you will add cold water because you don't want your scoby, this is the scoby, you don't want that to go into any hot liquid because it will kill it. And that's, and then you just let it sit 
and it ferments. I let it from it's supposed to be done like in I think a week to for you to drink it. But I let it go to vinegar, so I let it sit for a long time, like almost, probably mine goes for 20 days. And then I start to use it for the chickens. But it's got a vinegar taste then. And you can actually smell, if it smells bad, it's not good. If it smells kind of fruity-ish, you're, you're okay. It's got a good smell, or it smells like vinegar, you're good. And that's how and then what I do is I save the jars from the apple cider vinegar and then I put my kombucha in here. So that's what's in there. This is kombucha. And I've saved these jars too, but I haven't filled them. There's also apple cider vinegar. So that's how you make kombucha. And what do I do with the kombucha? Well, we could drink it, but I give it to my chickens. I add it to their water, and it's good. It's a good probiotic. I guess it would be a probiotic for their gut, keep their guts healthy. I put it in every single water that I do for them. Well, that's how I make kombucha. And the thing is, I don't know if I told you everything in the video. I can't remember. There was something I thought I wanted to add about the kombucha. Oh, I forgot to add in that video. When you get your kombucha all made, you're supposed to cover it so that no fruit flies will want to fly into it. And don't refrigerate it until you want it to stop. Because if you wanted, say you wanted to keep your scoby for another time and you didn't want to make any more kombucha for a while, you could put your scoby in the refrigerator and it will stay healthy. Put it in a container, close it up, but make sure it's marked because... <laughs> Because it can get it can get, wrong. it can get something put into it that shouldn't have been in it. Jim, I had it used to have it in a, a mason jar. Jim didn't know what it was, and he put bacon grease on top. So that scoby scoby got ruined. So I had to make another scoby. Oh, we also had other jars in there with bacon grease. Bacon in grease it. in it, and he just happened to choose the one that was a scoby, and it wasn't bacon grease, and so my my scoby got ruined. Well, now that's the end of the video. I hope you had a great day, and I'll talk. Oh, what? A phone call? No, I'm, I won't mention okay. that. I had a phone <laughs> call, but I won't mention it. <laughs> I'll talk to you all again later. Bye.